All right, welcome back, welcome back. And in today's episode, I wanna show y'all how to work with data tables because they are super useful. And if you get creative enough, like you could use them for a whole bunch of cool things. So I, I guess I'll give you an example before we get started. So I don't know if you played Elden Ring or any other game where you collect loot and uh, armor and stuff like that, but all those different pieces of uh, armor or loot, they all do something to the character, whether they raise his attack or lower his defense or raise her or her speed, whatever you want to call it, right? But that could be done with data tables. And this is what I want to show you. So in today's episode, we're going to make um, a data table that can recognize our items. We'll make three items um, that all do different things with different stats. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. First thing is with a blank project open, right? Uh, we would go to our third person character. And the first thing here is let's create the stats that we want um, to manipulate. And in your game, you could create any kind of stats. But for me, I'm just going to do three right now. So I'm going to do health. Um, or actually, let's do, because health will be something different. Let's call this one, let's do speed, strength, and defense. So speed, and then you can duplicate that and then call this one strength. And then the last one, defense, uh, or power, defense, you know, whatever stats you want to have. But these are just example. So we got three stats here. Next thing we need to do is make a widget that displays the value of those three stats. So right click, user interface, widget blueprint, user, and we'll call this HUD. In your HUD, go ahead and add a canvas panel. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the right way. Right click it, wrap it with a scale box. Oops. Right click it, wrap it with a scale box. And then also right click it and wrap it with a size box. Turn your size box to width height override uh, 1920 by 1080. Bop. OK. And now here, all we need is some text. So add six blocks of text. And the first one we'll call it strength. Um, second one, which you can just duplicate from here, we'll call this one speed. Now, if you're really building a UI, I, I would, you know, hope that you take a little bit more time with this. You could put it in a vertical box to make it more neat or whatever um, but since this is just an example we're just going quickly and we'll call this last one what did I call it power oh defense all right now we didn't set the value of those uh, variables so don't worry about that right now all we need to do is make it so that they have a number so we need three more text blocks one you can copy and paste, so you got two. And copy and paste, so now you got three, right? And we're only doing this so we can see the values of our data table um, changing, uh, what it needs to change. So on your first text block, uh, bind it to the character. So right over here where it says text, create a binding. The only binding that we're gonna do is third person character. So cast it third person character, get player character, and then what we want for this one, since this is the first one, strength. So we'll say get strength. And whatever number that is, we'll make it display on the screen. Set your other ones up just like this. So for this one, speed, bind the text, so create a binding. Same thing, same thing. Third person character, get player character. And then we're going to say get speed. And hook that up. And the last one, we're going to do the same thing except defense. <laughs> Third person character, get player character. 
and bop bop get um defense I must have spelled it wrong dang nabbit what do we call it in the third person oh power <laughs> no wonder so it's not defense my bad it's called power all right and so in this one we're going to get the power so get power Bop, and hook that right on in so those are my three stats that we're going to be playing with uh during this game or during this example in order for those stats to show up on the screen go into your third person character and at event begin to play right on the back of it create a widget and make sure it's the widget that we just created mine was called hud and you want to add it to the viewport okay this way we can see our stats changing and when we press play it should be zero 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 on everything yeah right okay all right so now let's get to the good stuff right we need some items so we're going to create three items so i made a folder called pickups so just a new folder and inside of my pickups folder i'm going to create a blueprint class that's an actor and this is going to be called item one right and inside of item one all i want to do is add a variable and this variable needs to be of the type string and it's very important to name this variable what you want it to be called so if this is your chest plate or if this is your uh, super black blade or whatever you want to call it you know put that right there but for me i'm gonna call this item one just like that capital item one next thing we need is something to pick up so let's just put a cube here and we'll make it overlap all so that when the character runs into it it can destroy this object cool now all we have to do is duplicate this item two more times but we're not going to do that right now because we'll wait to put some code in there and then we'll duplicate it but for item one we got it set up go back to your folder or your regular folder and inside here we need to start creating up our data table to tell each item what it does to the player or how it affects the player so in order to create a da data table first thing you need is called a struct and you would get that in blueprints here and then right there struct structure and we're going to call it struct and inside your structure all you're doing is saying which variables do I want this data table to register you're not changing the variables you're not setting the variables here all you're saying is which variables are we going to be working with and we already know that for this example we know that you know one of them is going to be speed right and make sure the variable type is a float so it matches um, what's the other one it's called <laughs> strength and power okay i don't really know the difference between all that but we're not getting into the technicals strength and then add one more variable that's power okay and if you notice we got to make sure they're all floats so that looks good to me now our struct is set up so next we need to add a data table so right click in your content browser and go to miscellaneous right there and there's a data table now when you click it it's going to ask which struct do you want to use with this data table and obviously we just created one so we'll use that one so we'll use the one I called struct press ok and this data table we'll call it uh, new DT okay inside of the data data table when you double click it looks like this and all you have to do here is add a row so press plus sign and this is your new row and as you notice it has the row name speed strength and power and you can set all of that here now as far as the row name just double click on it to set the name and for us we want this same this row to be named our item so like again if you called your item super chest piece one well you name it that but for me i named mine item one bow and for item one now we can set all the different properties for it so for the speed if you pick up item one let's say it's going to give you 
40 speed. For your strength, it's going to give you 60 strength. And for your power, it'll give you 100 power. These are random numbers I'm coming up with off the top of my head, by the way. So now we've got item one, and, we, and item one is all perfect. So what we should do now is let's go ahead and write the code into item one. So go back into your pickups, into item one. Now let's think about what we want to happen. When the player walks over this item, we want it to add the stats to the player and this item to be disappeared. So first thing first is, let's go to the event graph. Well, let's make sure our cube is overlap all, perfect. All right, and then go to the event graph. And in here, when the player overlaps the cube, so third person character, then we want something to happen. We want those stats to be added. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, does data table exist? So does data table row exist? So we're saying once the player overlaps the item, we're asking, does that item exist in our data table? So first select the data table that you're dealing with, which ours is new DT and our item, drag it off right here, say get item. So this is our variable that we set up. And all you gotta do is drag that into the row name. And if the item right here is set correctly, then the row name should be set. So our item is not set. So item one, we should call it item one for the value. So that way the value of this is gonna sync with the row name, just like that item one. All right, so does data table row exist? And we're asking, does item one exist in the data table? Cool. If so, then we need to put a branch. So if it does exist, then what we need to do is get, all right, so what you wanna do is type in get data table row, and you should see this one right here, get data table row. And because that row does exist, so true, so if that row exists, then we wanna select the data table that we're using on this one, and we're gonna plug right here straight in so basically so we're getting the row item one and now what you want to do is where it says out row right click split the structure or split the pin and now you'll see all three of your your items or all three of your stats so when this row is found then we need to set the stats of the player to whatever these stats are inside of our data table so the way to do that is drag off your third person character and say set speed. And we'll hook that right up and hook your speed up to the speed. So next thing is strength and then power. Same thing, set strength and set power. Okay. Now that you've got all three of those things hooked up, make sure that they are hooked up to your data table. So my strength needs to be plugged into the strength and my power needs to be plugged into the power. Then I want this whole item to disappear. So destroy actor. Compile, save. So basically let's run over that again. When the actor overlaps the cube it's going to cast it a third person character it's going to say does the data table row exist of item one and if it does exist what's going to get that row and then it's going to set the character's speed strength and power according to whatever item one was so now what we can do since we have item one good let's add in our second item here so in your content browser, duplicate item one, and let's call it item two, that works. And for me, I'm gonna change the color on item two so I know the difference here. I'm gonna pick a random color over here. That looks nice. It's still white though. 
Let's do something else. Let's do it real color. Okay, cool. So item two, all you have to do here is down where it says the item one, you just change the, the value of this to make it say item two. So uh, in your data table, now we can add a new row and this one's gonna be called item two. And then set your stats accordingly for item two. So you click here, speed item two is gonna give us 200 speed. Strength is gonna give us 5,000 strength. <laughs> and for power, it's gonna give us 1,400 power. I don't know what item this is, but it's dope. So you might want this one. Anyways, in our blueprint for item two, let's just make sure that everything is hooked up correctly, which it is. You don't have to change anything. Only thing you had to change was the name of this variable here because the code still works. So let's do our third item by duplicating item two and we'll call it item three. Again, go into item three in your item variable, change that so it says item three and then compile and save and in your data table here let's add a new row and we'll call it item three and so for this one let's make it so that we know what it does this this is a debuff so it's going to set your speed to 100 your strength to 50 and your power to 45. okay so now if you have a whole bunch of items as you can see, this could become very beneficial because each item can have different properties and these properties can easily be applied to your character using this data table. So let's actually see this working. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, let's change the color of item three so we know that it's a difference. This is our debuff. So we want it to be like something that we know is debuff. How about this? Okay. Save. All right, putting item one into the world right there. Then I'll put item two right beside it. And then I'll put item three. Now you could have set the code up to do whatever you wanted to with these items. I just wanted to show you something uh, simple, for example. So we see my strength is zero, speed zero, power zero. But if I walk over to item one, now my strength gets set to whatever item one had in it. <laughs> if I walk over to item two, my sh all of that, all my stats are about to get set to whatever item two makes me. So that's strong. And then if I go to item three, boom, it debuffs and then, you know, it puts my stats. So what you could do is you could do math in your item pickup so that your character has a set of standard stats and these items add or subtract from those standard stats but in this case what we did is we just made each item have its own set of stats that fully replaces the character's stats when they pick them up so that's how you use a data table i hope that you learned something um it wasn't that tough but if you have any questions definitely hit me up and i'll hopefully be able to answer any questions um for you but other than that, I hope you have a really great, wonderful, beautiful day. And also, yo, stay creative, like for real. <laughs> I'll holla at you on the next one. Peace.